you ah. piece of shit fat. You like to suck big dicks? Cut it out. Say I like to suck big dicks. Leave him alone, Ram. Okay, okay. You like to suck big dicks. Ow! Oh, oh, oh. I like to suck big dicks. Oh, mmm, mmm. I can't get enough of them. All right, you ignorant pigs, listen up, because I'm only going to do this once. Nothing fucking works. We're going to Holy Divers Night at the Movies. I was supposed to make a video last week, but that piece of shit wouldn't work. The OBS started to take crap when I fucked around with the settings. I'm living in boomer land. This night's offering from Beyond the Pit is Heather's. 1989, starring, I actually have to have some cards today, Shannon Doherty as Heather Duke, Kim Walker as Heather Chandler, the bitch, Lisa Ann Falk as Heather McNamara, the hot one, Winona Ryder as Veronica Sawyer, and Christian Slater as Jason Dean, directed by Michael Lehman, and written by Daniel Waters. Let's check it out. movie kind of reminds me of like the CW's Riverdale. Now Riverdale is a place where Archie Andrews lives and if you've ever read the comic strip, the Archie comic strip, uh, you would know that it's a nice place. Very clean, everybody's happy, you know sometimes the teens deal with real problems but at the end of the day it's still just pretty white kids with problems but in Riverdale you know, the problems were never really that bad, you know? I mean, Archie's worst problem, other than being a junior in high school for 50 years, is how can I, how can I go on a date with Betty Cooper or Veronica Lodge? He has two decent-looking chicks, Betty Cooper and Veronica Lodge, and he doesn't know which one he's going to go out on a date with. And, or who, it's like, kind of like living in Mayberry. And Am I going to take Helen to the church picnic, or am I not going to take Helen to the church picnic? So you get this movie, Heather's, 1989, which kind of bombed in uh, theaters. It didn't really go anywhere, but it became a cult hit, which later spawned its own musical. I have not watched the musical, but um, it's about a girl played by Winona Ryder, who uh, basically gets into the in-crowd in high school. And the movie kind of starts off with them playing croquet, and it's kind of like a metaphor for her life, because she's sitting there in the middle of a daydream, and they're using the croquet mallets to smack balls at her head. And then she wakes up, and she's kind of in school, and... The, the hot girls are on the prowl, basically, in the lunchroom, up to some mischief. And how are they going to terrorize the people at the bottom of the social pecking order? What I don't understand is how this movie is not in the top uh, teen movies for the 80s, you know. Because what comes to mind for the 80s is obviously the Brat Pack movies with Molly Ringwald and Judd Nelson. And so you got 16 Candles, and then you also have, uh, what is the, uh, The Breakfast Club. I'm going to have all three of you for the rest of your natural born lives, you know. So, uh, I, I don't know why those two stand out. I, I guess it's, I guess the pretty white kids with problems in that one are just more relatable. So, that aside, you know, uh, she finally wakes up one day, realizes my life isn't perfect, and I hate my friends. And she meets this guy, played by Christian Slater, named Jason Dean. And he's kind of the cool bad boy. Let's face it. Jason Dean was made by studio heads to unhinge bras. When you see a guy who kind of, who kind of dresses in black, but he's not fat, goth, or disgusting, and... Uh, he's kind of sitting by himself in the lunchroom, and then you later see him on a motorcycle... And the way that they got him dressed, he is designed to unhinge bras. That is all you need to know. He is designed to unhinge those bras. 
and uh, she's quite taken with him. And uh, she decides that uh, she's going to go to her first college party. Now, what happens when a high school girl, a junior in high school, goes to a college party? Younger girls back then in the 80s are expected to put out. They're expected to put out. That's all there is to it. So, of course she doesn't want to put out for the college guys. And, the, and you know, one of the good little caveats on that is she's at the, car, at, at the party and is like, it's kind of cool that you're still in high school. I, one of the things that sucks about being in college is asking a girl what her major in. So when you do come to college, what subjects are you going to take first? So he asked the same question that he would have ended up asking a woman his own age. And, you know, living in the 90s and knowing what I know about 90s women in the late 90s, yes, they wanted, a girl in high school wanted absolutely nothing to do with you from the moment she turned 16. They're already cruising the college campuses looking to get dicked down at the sorority parties. Except for Winona Ryder character, they had been lacing her drink the whole time with the booze. So that's just one of those dangers. That's... That's more pretty white kids with problems kind of stuff. And uh, while she's out on this, uh, while she's out at this college party, she decides to leave. And, uh, you know, there's some ramifications socially for leaving. She's in the in crowd. You're not supposed to leave the college party. And then she hooks back up with uh, this uh, smooth Jason Dean character. And they get together and they go into her house because they know she has a hangover to basically play a prank on her. They're going to put a phlegm gobber in her drink or something, or he gets out Drano, or rust removal for drains, and they have her drink that down. And they kind of go on this killing spree, and that's the spring off of the, that sets the rest of the tone for the movie, is how do we keep assholes from being assholes? Maybe you kill one of the assholes. Did you ever think that when somebody's an asshole to you, rather than crying to the school, the school heads or the powers that be, you'd be an asshole back? Maybe you shiv the guy in the lunchroom, kind of like in prison. You know, being in a clique in uh, prison and then being in a clique in high school are about the same kind of thing, you know. So, they kind of go on this dark killing spree, but you know, she falls in love with this guy because he's made to unhinge bras, and she kind of just follows along with him, you know, throughout the whole, uh, for, throughout the entirety of the movie until she decides to inevitably try to put a stop to it. Now, without spoilers, we got to go to the Slayer Pit totals of this movie. We have one teen on a ladder with, uh, with access to a girl's bedroom. One cup of poison pipe cleaner, handgun foo, mineral water flu, explosions, one land whale plane in traffic, implied homosexual innuendo. Is he sleeping, dude? Oh, fucking great. Is <laughs> Punch it in. Ow. Oh, shit. three, guy. One, two, three. <laughs> What not to say during a funeral dirge, gratuitous Riverdale references, and five dead bodies. And uh, what not to say at a fu funeral dirge is uh, they had this moment after the first death in this movie where they're all at the funeral because it was one of the popular kids. And the best part about that is the uh, heads of the school, the principal, the English teacher, it's always an English teacher. The, you know, the, the, hit, the yippy dippy teacher that always feels things. She always, I, I, I don't think I feel what the children are thinking, you know, kind of teacher. The guidance counselor and the secretary, well, God, if we, if we let the kids out early, those switchboards are going to light the bleep up and we can't have that. I mean, if it were a cheerleader, maybe we could have gotten half a day and everybody would have been fine with that. <laughs> and so, um, I, you know, this movie just has a lot of real good dark comedy. And they, they, they poke fun at all the taboo subjects that you're not allowed to talk about in public schools in America. Bombs in the school, school shootings, 
making fun of the fat girl they call Martha Dump Truck. And this also gets led to the last little point there. You have gratuitous Riverdale references. Now, Winona Ryder's character in this, in this movie is called Veronica Sawyer. Her best friend is a girl by the name of Betty Flynn, who has a bigger part in the musical, because I did take a look at the musical a little bit, but has a way lesser part in the movie. And uh, they, they also uh, poke fun at the, the, you got a good name dichotomy there, Betty Flynn and Veronica Sawyer. That's T Huckleberry Finn and Tom Sawyer. So you have a Mark Twain reference there, which I think uh, plays to one of the strengths of the movies. Like who, uh, The writer in this movie also would go on to write uh, Demolition Man, and Demolition Man is an undeniable masterpiece, in my opinion, because it speaks so well today, you know? You have a black guy committing obvious crimes, and you got cops that show up, and they're like, I'm a cop! I'm not trained to handle this kind of violence. And then they shoot said black guy. And then you got to hear about it on CNN for the next 15 weeks. And somehow that was Orange Man's problem. Like he could have been there in that moment to be like, stop, don't shoot him. Let him come down off his fentanyl high. And, and that's, uh, that's, that's the guy who wrote this movie. So uh, I got to give him points for that. So let's go to the Slayer. Pitt Academy Award nominations to Winona Ryder for proving that you do not have to be the hottest girl to get the guy. All you have to do is be thin, feminine, have a natural hair color, and just wear a dress. Look at that. Isn't that nice? Isn't that like a refreshing cup of water, the way she looks in that picture? I know I'd certainly like to have gone on a date with her in high school. Or just something like that rather than some big fat land whale with purple hair and face tats which is what we've got in current year get dressed in the morning i'm triggered i take a shower i'm triggered i get in the car i'm triggered we also got Kurt Kelly, hey Ram, doesn't this cafeteria have a no fags allowed rule Christian Slater Seems to have an open door policy on assholes, though. Chaos. Chaos, isn't it great? Chaos is what killed the dinosaurs. And then finally, Kim Walker. Fuck me gently with a chainsaw. Do I look like Mother Teresa? I give it four skulls. Holy Diver says, check it out. And as you know, YouTube has many features you can use to interact with me. You can like the video, dislike the video, comment, or subscribe. But I probably won't be back until I figure out my OBS bullshit and this microphone and how to use the camera and the cam link. You know, I've got this place wired up like a bomb in Mission Impossible right now. And I'm just analoging it from my camera and doing just fine. I'm just trying to slightly make my video quality better so that some autist doesn't go ah, mop, mop, your sound quality sounds like shit holy diver i will not subscribe but until i see you again suck my dick bitch fuck you oh. suck my dick bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and stay metal my friends when on i friggin sold out it's better to burn out than to fade away whoa whoa whoa